So the music here, and I am with a lovely, beautiful queen. She's very talented. She directs plays. She's an actress herself. I am here with Miss Tanika Baptiste. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey! Thank you, Kelda. Yes. A queen as well, oh. first of all. <laughs> Y'all know Kelda's a queen. Oh. Boss lady. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and this is a super boss lady, okay? <laughs> Because she brought the <laughs> acting out of me. <laughs> yes. You killed it. You yes. killed it. If you guys didn't see how Black Mother Say I Love You with Kelda, you truly missed out. She was amazing. And so, like, easy to collaborate with. Like, that oh. was one thing I was super grateful for. Because yeah. you just took to it. You just, and every time I asked you to do something, you just did it and mm -hmm. you rose to the occasion. Mm -hmm. So I'm so, so, so grateful you said yes. Oh, thank you oh, again. And thank you. Because <laughs> you just upped my resume. I can add that to my resume now. A theatrical artist. Yes. Or, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we about to get into everything Ooh, okay. that you do. We're going to talk about some other things as well. I first would like to ask you, how do you identify yourself hmm how do I identify myself <sighs> I would say that I am a black queer woman uh, artist I'm a daughter I'm an aunt niece cousin sister mm -hmm. uh, could have been a baby mama but he was an editor <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a friend mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I'm a feminist mm-hmm and uh, I'm a hustler. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I workaholic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably how I identify myself. Okay, okay. Yeah. So with that being said, has it been difficult to find the LGBTQI mm. community to identify? You know, I feel like I struggled identifying myself as a queer person just because of the way mm -hmm. I was brought up and mm -hmm. what I was taught. And so I didn't really um, reconcile with the fact that I was bisexual until I moved to uh, the Bay Area. And mm -hmm. I just really like immersed myself in the theater scene. The theater is, um, has a lot of uh, queer folks mm -hmm. within the industry. And so watching them kind of be comfortable with who they were and seeing people like show up for themselves unapologetically mm -hmm. helped me feel comfortable to be myself and like know like there was nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of finding my community, I would say it was tough because I was choosing not to be a part. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm like, now that I accept myself, like I connect with, I connect with them. You know, I worked uh, with Rhino, which is the oldest LGBTQI theater company in the whole world. So, uh, yeah, they're they're easy to find if you want to if you want to find them. I would say, and then you know, for the most part, they have I've been embraced. I would say as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. And so I also wanted to talk about uh, your recent play that you <laughs> directed. Yeah. You did an amazing job. <laughs> we were like. Like when you when you had to leave to New York, we're like, no, we want her here. No, I felt so bad. Oh my god! <laughs> but yeah, that play, you know, that was in dedication to my grandmother, uh -huh. and I actually had a conversation with her um, about how she came to America mm -hmm. um, because she's born um, born in uh, Grenada, and she told me basically that she had the option because in the play you know mm -hmm. the mother goes to canada first mm -hmm. which a lot of uh west indian jamaican women did mm -hmm. back in the day but my grandmother also had the opportunity but she told me she was like it's a scam it was a scam people mm -hmm. were like you had to it basically it was like you couldn't go further up mm -hmm. from what i gathered from what she told me mm -hmm. so um yeah but it was in dedication to her because she left uh her family mm -hmm. to come to america to be mm -hmm. have, to provide a better opportunity for her kids. Mm -hmm. That was she. She was forty four years old when she left. Mm -hmm. She had a she was a manager in a restaurant back in Trinidad, mm -hmm. and she's like, there's not really a lot of opportunity for her four kids. So mm -hmm. she she did what she had to do. Mm -hmm. So that that play was in tribute to her her sacrifice for our family. Mm -hmm. um, and tell us the name of the play again. How black mothers say I love you. 
by Trey Anthony. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Cal the Music Baby. Hey, directed by Tanika <laughs> Baptiste. You know what I'm saying? And so, also, um, so, so your grandmother inspired you to tell this story. Yes, yes. And how, I guess, Trey Anthony, how did you come across something that resonated? Joe, Joseph Talley, he uh, works at Theater Rhino, mm -hmm. and he also works at ACT, American Conservatory Theater, mm -hmm. and I believe he is a literary manager, mm -hmm. uh, so he has access to plays that are considered by, by the theater. And so he reached out to me because I'd done some work prior for mm -hmm. Rhino, but he, um, th this play was selected by a few folks, theater theater folks, mm -hmm. as part of their season. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe there was another uh, black woman director who was supposed to direct it. Mm -hmm. And she, unfortunately, she couldn't do it. Well, fortunately, <laughs> she couldn't do it. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, and so then he, they reached out to me. And okay. I had been, I had done like four other directing things for them. So. Mm -hmm. They were like, okay, Tanika will probably want to do mm -hmm. this, but that he he didn't have any idea that I had that uh, that connection mm -hmm. to the play. Being you know, my family is from the West Indies, and mm -hmm. my grandmother did the same thing. Like that, it's just sometimes God and the universe wow. just works out like that. Yes. So, yes. Um, yeah, it was just meant to be, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I have to thank Joe for bringing the the play to my radar. Yeah. 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 Which. which yeah. And <laughs> and it was huge. I mean, every time it was a standing ovation. You yeah, know what I mean? Y'all deserved it. You know? Like you all were perfectly cast too. Like when I <laughs> thought about Valerie, I'm like, who can play this role? And it's really tough, especially being a newer director, to mm -hmm. get people to trust you, mm -hmm. to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like folks know me as a, a actor singer. Mm -hmm. They're like, Who does she think to direct? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that you guys even like trust in me to do to direct and mm -hmm. you know everybody just was like a team player mm -hmm. um i i don't take that lightly mm -hmm. because I, I i told y'all the first day rehearsal mm -hmm. it was hard to, to cast this play mm -hmm. and also it's like you have to put you have to put the right people in the right roles mm -hmm. anybody can act you know mm -hmm. but it's about like really matching the, the person's essence to the role mm -hmm. so you slid into valerie so perfectly because <laughs> she was like the positive, um, she just wanted to be the peacemaker, mm -hmm. very nurturing. You have like a very uh, generous spirit. So, mm -hmm. not Claudette. Right, <laughs> Claudette right. was the angry, Claudette was bitter good. one. <laughs> but also understandably bitter because mm -hmm. she felt abandoned by her mother. That's right, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, and Carla mm -hmm. played the major, the mom. She, oh my God, <laughs> and, Carla. Yeah. That was great casting. Yeah, I was like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And Rhino was able to like house her and it just, it just worked out. I'm like, you know, but that's the thing I love about theater is how communal it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, me, the director, the cast, black woman, mm -hmm. And everybody else was pretty much white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty and, much. But that, you know, it's a it's a queer theater company, mm -hmm. but the story, the queer element of the story was not the overarching part of it. Yes, mm -hmm. it's causing, there was some strife because of it, because mm -hmm. the daughter is uh, gay and the mother is kind of homophobic, mm -hmm. but it was more about just relationships and all of us have a mother and all of us have you know parental figures in our life so mm -hmm. we all can relate to that mm -hmm. no matter what color we are what uh gender orientation or sex we are so mm -hmm. yeah that's i i just i love i love 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 theater mm -hmm. for that yeah and just find how we're connected yeah and that's yeah. true like and, and everyone uh, you know they're they're like a team you know what right I mean? and they it, operate like when they you know it truly is a team yeah. mm -hmm. and i've worked with uh um, the, the lighting design, pretty much everybody I've had worked with prior, um, Daria and I had worked more so, um, at another theater company in Marin. Mm -hmm. Um, we both worked on the wardrobe team mm -hmm. and I just saw how fabulous she was mm -hmm. and she was our costume designer for How Black Mothers. Mm -hmm. I had yes, costumes. She was, she was great. She mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I had costumed the show prior, but I was like, I really want to focus on the story. Yeah. And so... That was more important to me than like mm -hmm. I needed somebody who was trained and went to school for costume design to really like take on that responsibility yeah. to make sure that y'all looked and felt great and mm -hmm. comfortable 
And so, um, and she was the only, unfortunately, she was the only other woman a part of the creative team. Mm -hmm. I would like for more women to, to step into roles outside of just acting, like becoming lighting designers, costume designers, mm -hmm. scenic designers. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I want to kind of help to, to bring forth within mm -hmm. our, our community, especially us, black women, like, mm -hmm. We could do anything. Mm -hmm. So That's right. <laughs> we could do anything. That's right. So <laughs> Mika, can you list some events or places that are LGBTQI friendly? Whew. Well, I will say uh overall, because I, I'm obsessed with my work. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell y'all the arts or yeah. the arts. If you know, there's a lot of folks who um the arts are a refuge for us. Mm -hmm. So Definitely theater, theater, theater. That's where you will find so many people you can relate to and have probably have a similar b backstory as you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably it because mm -hmm. I'm so focused on my work. <laughs> that's all I got. I don't know where else. I mean, um, even us in the Castro, yeah. I was like, I never, every time I go to the Castro, because that's, you know, that's where we did the play. Yeah. You never see... Well, I don't. I don't see us mm -hmm. out representing. So I was like, this play is all black woman cast. Mm -hmm. We are here. Black women are queer as well. We have mm -hmm. things to say. Um, mm -hmm. So if I don't see places where I like where I identify, mm -hmm. like we just have you just have to go and create them. So I'm hoping to do more of that mm -hmm. um, throughout my career, throughout my time in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, just make spaces for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, that that's because I yeah, because I was gonna ask you where can we find right. a good hangout right. place for the LGBT, you know. Yeah. I, I would say um I just I took refuge in theater rhino and mm -hmm. like I said, that's the oldest uh LGBTQIA theater company in the whole world. I'm not exaggerating, it's the it's literally the oldest. Um, wow. So um yeah, that's that's unfortunately that's all I got <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah. But um, I do hope to like get to uh, find other spaces and places and mm -hmm. be invited to these places. Mm -hmm. um, or like you said, creating them or yourself, create them myself. You know? Honestly, yeah. And it will spread, and people get the word out, and it's like, okay, right. Tamika said, meet here every Friday. Right. You know, and we need more of us, honestly, in the in the theater community. Um, I think mm -hmm. people have this preconceived notion about theater being like, oh, oh, white people. Yes, mm -hmm. but the, mm -hmm. like our piece, that was for us. Yeah, that was literally for us, and so the support of the community mm -hmm. uh, is super important for them to want to produce works like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and including within the Black theater communities, I think you know we have to acknowledge mm -hmm. our presence. We have to acknowledge that this uh, Black. LGBTQI folks are here. We've been here, mm -hmm. and we're not just uh, for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I did director the play about drag queens, and mm -hmm. drag queens most of the time are relegated to just entertainment. But we don't think about, you know, what they go through, their mm -hmm. money, like things that they might be struggling with. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just mm -hmm. like we need to really like tap in and like care about people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm probably going to have to make these, these places as I go. And that's okay. I can do it. You know? Yeah. No, you can. Yeah. You're a boss <laughs> and you got a big network. Yeah. So yeah. And um, now will this primarily be when you do gatherings and stuff, is it primarily uh, the black LGBTQI mm. cup uh, or is it a mix with everyone? Mm, I would say f thus far, it's probably been focused mostly on like uh, mm -hmm. black and femme and non-binary folks mm -hmm. because there is a lack of, mm -hmm. you know, that I I don't really see mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. kind of championed out here, you know. Mm -hmm. It's either like, it's either black or it's, or it's woman mm -hmm. or it's, you know, the mm -hmm. whole community, but like that specific group of us, mm -hmm. um, I don't really know or, or have access to, so. Mm -hmm. oh, like offending people when I say I don't know. No, so just, no. You're telling what you yeah. know, you know? Yeah. So, now I wanted to ask you another question. Mm -hmm. um, how does being uh, a black queer affect your life, mm -hmm. friends, family, um, work? Yeah. You know? 
I would say it definitely informs what stories that I want to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, you know, like I said, I, I struggle with a coming out mm-hmm. and accepting myself. So um, I would say it's it's been a positive uh, part of my identity because mm-hmm. it, I just stepped into my power, stepped into my womanhood. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like friends and all that, like most of my friends, I think identify as queer. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not gonna out my family member, but like watching them come out, mm-hmm. one of my uh, family members was like, "Wow, you're like just so bold and so brave." Mm-hmm. So um, watching them go through everything they went through with that and mm-hmm. like knowing like I was but afraid to like really be that person mm-hmm. honestly it's given me so much like mm-hmm. strength and like love self love and love for other folks and mm-hmm. like grace for myself and other people mm-hmm. it's only been it's only been positive mm-hmm. um, just to Keep it real with yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now, did you come out, um, you know, when you were younger, like teens, or was it... Yeah, I think um, my early 20s, I started saying that I was bi. Because mm-hmm. um, I was away from home. I was, in, you know, here, up in Northern California, living my best life. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I didn't, I think, unfortunately, especially with bisexual women, you're kind of like, seen as like promiscuous and like mm-hmm. you know you're just doing it to you know be acting like a thought or yeah, whatever kids yeah. say nowadays uh-huh. but <laughs> um now it's like i don't want to i want to be with somebody who i just respect and they respect me mm-hmm. and i don't want to put a gender or a color or creed mm-hmm. nothing on it i just really want to like end up with whoever is like we just we just vibe. so what do you think what more do you think we could do to support each other? I think um, we need to let God be God. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody be kind because mm-hmm. you never know what somebody is going through. Mm-hmm. Um, speak from love. Don't speak from judgment. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, just work, stay in your lane. Like, everybody got something they're trying to work on and be better for. Mm-hmm. So... You know, just know, like, give give yourself grace, give other people grace. Mm-hmm. And then not to say, like, you have to, like, love everybody, but, like, respect is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially, like, with black folks, um, with BIPOC, everybody's, like, we are, we're just coming into, like, self-love, mm-hmm. I feel. Because mm-hmm. we've been trying to be, like, the other folks for so long and realizing, like, we're... We have so many gifts with with our own cultural backgrounds and things. So, um, just learn loving yourself so you can try to love or at least appreciate and respect other people. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I try to take with me. Do you think that maybe we need, you know, we as Black people, we need to maybe create programs mm-hmm. or, you know, just certain certain groups or whatever to support mm-hmm. each other and to you know, because everyone, everyone turns a new age every day, and people do struggle within themselves. Like, right. am I, you know, am I this or am I that? Right. So, do you think we need to maybe like create groups and, and programs for people? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like we, we definitely need to connect more. Mm-hmm. Um, I was reading an article real quick about like with, with black women specifically how it's just hard for us to get our hair done. Mm-hmm. Like going. Mm-hmm. To- <laughs> like it's just hard just the nature of how like black hair care has gotten people yeah. don't want to wash and wash and dry your hair blow dry your hair people right. just the customer services like the the cultural um the culture has suffered the connection the the, the lessons that we learn from the older generations mm-hmm. we definitely need to like we need to have the intergenerational conversations mm-hmm. i feel your home girl who's like your age and younger don't know what that next part of womanhood it's going to be like mm-hmm. it's important to like mm-hmm. still still listen to your auntie still listen to your mom mm-hmm. your older cousin so yeah we need we need those family groups connections back we need mm-hmm. the groups with the within ourselves back mm-hmm. and not just us but like everybody mm-hmm. um you might like to skydive mm-hmm. or whatever you know mm-hmm. we just we need to like start stop being so much like in the facebook groups and like in the real-time groups the mm-hmm. facebook groups are great too mm-hmm. but you know it's important for us to, to have people to, to, to reach out to. Mm-hmm. People who are like suffering mental health stuff because 
they don't have nobody to, to talk to. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not good. You know, mm -hmm. it's important for you not to feel like you're alone. Mm -hmm. You, you got to know that people love you. Mm -hmm. You got to know that you belong somewhere, too. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, I would love to, like, spearhead. That's when I was in college. We, Me and my roommate, we talk about that all the time, how we wish there was, like, a black girl group that we could mm -hmm. just, like, feel comfortable going to and not feel criticized or, like, feel like, Mm -hmm. We didn't. We didn't. We weren't supposed to be there. Right. Yeah, right. Which is so important. I know, I know the feeling. That yeah. You just feel like you're isolated mm -hmm. from everyone. Like mm -hmm. I don't belong here. But no. And, and so uh, on social media, mm -hmm. do you find that useful to find places and people yeah. that are just like you? I think you know. I think I've grown thick skin mm -hmm. and maybe when I first started using social media that was what it was but now I, I try to purely use it to for business mm -hmm. and um you know I'm a little older now so I'm like I don't want to spend on my own <laughs> <laughs> I always spend all day on social media but yeah. yeah like it's important to connect with folks but also, I'm, I'm trying to connect to the next check. So right, that's really right. What, <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> that's really what's happening. I like that. Um, you know. <laughs>